purpose of this one day adventure was to find out how the Grey Gurnard handled our sea in a typical Force 4 wind. I launched at Train Alt and headed for open sea going round the island of Lismore before traversing the length of Loch Etiv and landing again at Tin Holt. I caught the early morning high tide at Kelly's Pier around 6.30am. The heavy overnight rain stopped as I arrived. It was my first time launching a boat on my own and I was keen to try the trailer's launch as I just changed from bunks to rollers. Previously I struggled trying to get the old inflatable boat off the bunks and the only way for me to launch on my own was to totally submerge the trailer and float the boat off. With the new setup, I stopped when the car tyres were about a foot from the water and the sea was below the trailer bearings. I untied the bow rope and easily pushed the boat off the rollers and into the water. Yep, it was that easy. The Mariner 25 horsepower outboard started second pool and I left it to warm up as I parked the car further up the beach. I eased the boat into deeper water and then once I was happy everything was running ok I went in the plane and was off. A new day's adventure had begun. It didn't take long to reach Connell Bridge, where Loch Etiv meets the open sea. There is often some interesting white water under the bridge, called the Falls of Laura, but it was very benign today as it was neat tides. Once I reached open sea, I pointed about towards the island of Mull. It was still quite calm, as I was on the water before the wind rose, but I knew that wouldn't last for long. Again, it didn't take long to cover the seven miles of open sea to reach Lismore Lighthouse. There is generally a bit of a tide race running from the Sound of Mull. I headed towards the race to introduce the Grey Gurner to the pyramid shaped waves generated by converging tide flows, but again it was a little disappointing because of neat tides.
the sea was now very much calmer in the shelter of the island, so I passed the five minutes by gawking at Duart Castle on the island of Mull. I then headed across the Sound of Mull, making my way towards Bernara Island, which is joined to Lismore of low tide. Where I landed on a lovely sheltered stony beach for a breakfast sandwich and to take some photographs. And I noticed that even the local sheep came to admire the new boat. But as time waits for no man nor tide, it was time to set off again. tip of Lismore, I decided to navigate through the shallow reefs to have a gawk at Port Ramsey. It is a lovely picturesque village. The cottages were built around 1850 to house lime kiln industry workers. The last lime kiln closed in 1934, but remains of this busy Victorian industry are still standing. Out of respect to the locals, I didn't land this time round as I appreciate they may not welcome strangers during the Covid pandemic. Instead, I headed back to sea via the Eastern Channel. I was surprised to see a relatively large queue for the passenger ferry over to Port Lappin in the mainland. So perhaps it's business as usual in Port Ramsey. I was now heading for the exposed eastern side of Lismore, where I knew I'd be fighting into a wind against tide situation, but I was looking forward to see how the boat would handle the conditions, and I'm delighted to say it performed very well. After 10 miles of wave jumping and dodging deep troughs, I finally arrived back at the sheltered entrance of Loch Etip again. I was curious to find how the boat would now handle the shorter, sharper waves of a windy sea loch. 
It's these conditions that remind me of driving in a cobbled street when using the F ribs. And once again I was pleasantly surprised by the smooth ride. I stopped in the shelter Sandy Beach for a late lunch and to have a leg stretch. But all too soon it was then time to head back to Tinault. I thoroughly enjoyed my first windy day afloat in the new boat, and I'm delighted with its performance on a bouncy sea. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.